right now at 7. My whole thought at the moment was, let's be calm. Let's not get this guy excited. He's got the gun. I don't. So you take the camera. It's yours, buddy. A KPI X5 reporter robbed at gunpoint while covering a rise in crime. Neighbors are now at their boiling points. You want to have that for open space? We want that too. But protect us. We shouldn't pay the penalty. We have to band together. We have to work together. We have to understand each other. We have to listen to each other. New at 7, we just spoke exclusively to the Bay Area basketball star now trying to unite community members after yet another Chinatown attack. Why one major health care provider is now in the process tonight of canceling tens of thousands of second dose vaccine appointments. And the vaccine distribution system for San Francisco teachers finally gets fixed, but Hope for any in-person learning is fading away. We're at a point where I'm not certain about this school year. And right now on the KPIX 5 News at 7, streaming on CBSN Bay Area, fed up neighbors around Twin Peaks in San Francisco catching brazen crimes like this on camera. When we went up to investigate, a KPIX 5 reporter became a victim as well. Good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. As KPIX5's Andrea Borba shows us, our reporter Don Ford is still pretty shaken up, along with neighbors. I never thought I'd be out here interviewing my own colleague for a story, but earlier today, Don Ford was out here working on a story about SFMTA voting unanimously last night to reopen the Portola Gate to Twin Peaks and keep the one behind me closed. He was talking to homeowners when the story took a turn. The question of whether to reopen Twin Peaks to cars has been argued daily since the beginning of the pandemic. Neighbors on Twin Peaks say scenes like this one from December of car break-in after car break-in have been commonplace since the roads to the top were closed. This afternoon, the smash and grabs turned into armed robbery. I just looked and I said, I'm not going to get shot today. You want the camera? I just kept my hands up like this. KPI X5 reporter Don Ford was on the story yesterday and again today and was preparing to interview nearby homeowners when a white luxury sedan with four men inside pulled up. The car came up here while we were about to do an interview. Three guys jumped out, one had a gun, put it up to my face and said, we're taking the camera. Ford, a veteran journalist, said the whole encounter with a Glock in his face took less than a minute. My whole thought at the moment was, Liz, be calm. Let's not get this guy excited. He's got the gun. I don't. So you take the camera. It's yours, buddy. The homeowner says the safety of the neighborhood has to be addressed and a priority going forward. You want to have that for open space? We want that too. But protect us. We shouldn't pay the penalty and the price for, for that action that SFMTA caused upon us. SFPD is on the case. They are looking for surveillance video in the area to see if they can capture any more identifying details about the suspects. In Twin Peaks, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5. People are fed up and tonight San Francisco Supervisor Rafael Mandelman is describing what happened as ridiculous and unacceptable. It's troubling, it's concerning, it was a an extremely brazen crime um, and it reinforces, I think, concerns that I'm hearing from my constituents in that area. Now we reached out to SFMTA for comment, have not heard back. And it's not just Twin Peaks. Tonight, San Francisco police are looking for the suspects who robbed a man at gunpoint inside a laundromat in Chinatown. Surveillance images show several people running into the store. They throw the man to the ground, hit him and rob him. The victim is expected to be okay. And tonight, former Golden State Warriors player Jeremy Lin is speaking out about the recent attacks on Asian Americans. He's also opening up about his own personal experiences with racism on the court. KPIX 5's Betty Yu has the exclusive interview. Betty? Liz, Jeremy Lin is now playing for the NBA G League, which is looking into his claim that he was called coronavirus during a game. Lin told me today he wants to promote the message of empathy, love, and compassion. Lynn, who grew up in the Bay Area, first opened up about his own experience on social media, saying, we are tired of being told that we don't experience racism. We are tired of being told that we have to keep our heads down and not make trouble. Lynn says he's not calling out the person who made the offensive comment because he's not interested in taking someone down. He says doing so doesn't solve the country's long-standing problems with racism. 
Asians can't only be passionate about Asian issues. Um, African Americans can't only be passionate about African American issues. We have to band together. We have to work together. We have to understand each other. We have to listen to each other. And not just between these two groups, between all groups, there has to be that type of solidarity. Coming up at 11 p.m. tonight, Lynn tells me that he was targeted multiple times with racist slurs during his basketball career. He is now using his platform on and off the court to raise awareness. Liz? He's doing a great job at that. All right, Betty, thank you. Let's take a live look at San Francisco tonight. After a pretty rocky start, teachers can now sign up for a COVID vaccine. So will that help get kids back in the classroom any sooner? Here's what KPIX 5's Kenny Choi found out. The San Francisco Unified School District has now received thousands of these vaccine codes for educators. But here's the big asterisk. Even if all these teachers were to get codes, and shots in the arm by midnight, this school would still be closed tomorrow. We're at a point where I'm not certain about this school year. 10% of the state's weekly vaccine allotment is now going to educators. After a brief delay, the city of San Francisco handed off more than 2,600 codes to SFUSD late Tuesday. Superintendent Vince Matthews says the district expected 5,000, saying today the city has had the ability to vaccinate our educators for over a week and staff are still having trouble getting appointments. We need the city to immediately prioritize access for educators. What are your thoughts on the progress that's been made by FSUSD or lack thereof? We don't know what's going on completely. Sometimes we're told one thing and it's something else. And so until they're straight with us, until we're able to you know, get to a date certain and get things going. I, I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Negotiations between the unions and school district continue with no reopening date set for San Francisco elementary schools. In Marin County, more than 90% are open and will kick off its vaccine super pods this week. We can cross check them at the actual, you know, at the actual site. Uh, so there is a structure to it. It's not just a Free for all. More than 25% of educators in Marin have already been vaccinated and all are expected to be offered a shot by April. There's not a cookie cutter approach to this. You know, communities have to figure out what is the right fit for them to be able to move forward. But the part that's not negotiable is we need to move forward and get kids back to school. Today, San Francisco Board of Education President Gabriela Lopez called for San Francisco to implement a super pod day like Marin County. In San Francisco, Kenny Choi, KPIX 5. Well, thousands of people are left wondering when they will be able to get their second dose of the vaccine after Sutter Health ran out of its supply. The provider currently has 90,000 second dose appointments, but it has to cancel 40,000 of them. The reason? They're waiting on more supply from the government. The CDC recommends getting the second shot within one month, but says people can go up to six weeks. Beyond that, there's just not enough data to know if it will still be effective. Taking a live look at San Jose tonight for the first time in months, people are working out. They are eating out inside and Santa Clara County is back in the red tier. Gyms can operate at 10% capacity indoors. At a Planet Fitness in San Jose, machines are spaced out. There are sanitation stations and reservations are required. And at San Pedro Square, the tents and tables will stay up for outdoor dining for a while, but restaurants can now open indoors at 25% capacity. What we've seen from the pandemic, more people are you know, living from it than what we originally expected. I think, uh, you know, the vaccines being, you know, sent out and dispersed and, you know, it's seeming like that we can get back to our normal lives. So I'm actually excited. Up next, the governor now says baseball fans may return to stadiums a lot sooner than you think. And a threat to Capitol Hill has canceled the session for tomorrow. The conspiracy that the feds believe could lead to another siege. And the bill in Sacramento that would bring some drastic new changes to the children's aisles at stores like Target. I think it's a wonderful idea to smoosh um, girl boy stuff together. Plus a shooting leads to a scary situation in the East Bay that lasted all day long. How it finally ended. Some high surf along the coast Thursday. We have a beach hazard statement that goes into effect 3 a.m. Thursday, continues to 3 a.m. Friday. That high surf is going to be partially kicked up by a big storm system in the Pacific that's going to send a good chance of rain towards us by Friday evening. We'll talk about the timing of that and more rain next week coming up in the forecast. 
And coming up all new tonight at 11, it's a side effect of the COVID vaccine doctors believe may be more common than expected. What women should know before they get their shot. I did think to myself, should I reach out to my doctor? So yes, we have definitely seen this at UCSF. Very scary and a bunch of people are going to get biopsies that they don't need. How to deal with COVID's false alarm. That's tonight on the KPI X5 News at 11 and we'll be right back. An hours long standoff in Fremont. It's finally over tonight. Authorities surrounded this home for most of the day while investigating a shooting. Gunfire reported just before 11 this morning on Lemke Place. One person was wounded, rushed to the hospital with life threatening injuries. The investigation led officers to this home on Ellsworth Street. Standoff finally ended about two hours ago. Police say that they have detained several people in the case. Let's take a live look at Oracle Park in San Francisco. According to the governor, we could be watching Giants games in person once the baseball season starts. Uh, we're working on the final details, but we've been working very closely with Major League Baseball, others uh, across the spectrum. We have confidence that when you think forward or look forward was April opening day, where we are likely to be if we all do our job. Yeah, what we took for granted mm. for so long, right? Being outside at a baseball game, the most natural thing in the world. Now it's a gift, you know. Now it's a now it's it's glad to see it come back, mm. and, uh, and of course there's rain in the forecast. <laughs> exactly. By the time we hit April, <laughs> that's though, that's good news, though. Yeah, we'll take the rain during March. By April, our rain chances typically start going down a lot, and of course that's when the baseball regular season starts. But we do have some rain in the forecast over the next several days. The first in a parade of storm systems is missing the Bay Area. This is hitting Southern California right now with some very welcome rainfall around Los Angeles in San Diego. We're going to be tracking that next storm moving in on Friday. Let's take a look at Futurecast. We're going to take you all the way through the middle of next week with all these waves of rain, the first of which moves in late in the day Friday. For most of it, it's going to hang out until after sunset on Friday. So moving in as we head through the evening hours, if you have some thoughts of maybe having dinner outside on Friday, earlier is better, even that's not your usual routine, just because those showers are going to be moving in. And by midnight, we're talking about rain across most of the Bay Area, but this is going to be a quick hitter. That rain is gone by the time the sun comes up on Saturday. Saturday looks dry the rest of the day, although it is going to be breezy. So I think Sunday is still the better half of the weekend for any outdoor activities. Sunday will remain dry. And then that next round of rain moves in on Monday, especially in the afternoon, evening and overnight hours. A brief little dry break and then another round of showers moves in on Tuesday. That will give way to a chance of lighter kind of off and on showers Wednesday. We're looking a week down the line at that point, though, so this still has plenty of time that it could change one way or the other, and that should dissipate as we head into Thursday, but maybe another chance of rain by Friday and Saturday of next week. That's really far down the line. Let's add it up. Just this first round of rain Friday night, two tenths to almost a half an inch of rain for a brief little rain event. That's a nice amount of rain. It's not going to be enough to cause any problems on the burn scars, but we're going to add up more rain on top of that. And by the time all is said and done, anywhere from three quarters of an inch to over an inch and a half of rain. But because it's going to happen gradually in these waves, we should be able to avoid any landslide threats on those wildfire burn scars. And with up and down rain chances, we're going to see the up and down pollen count over the next several days up tomorrow and Friday. But then Friday night's rain washes some of that pollen out, still tree pollen for the first half of the weekend before it climbs back up on Sunday. Looking outside right now, things are looking pretty good. Some low cloud cover and fog that's going to be settling back down towards ground level. Temperatures are mostly in the low to mid 50s, but 40s already in Santa Rosa, where you're going to end up in the 30s, while everybody else ends up in the 40s by early on Thursday morning. Only mid to upper 50s along the coast, mid to upper 60s for the South Bay with upper 60s in the Santa Clara Valley, mid to upper 60s inland in the East Bay, very close to what's normal for this time of year. That fog and low cloud cover should dissipate as we head towards late morning and early afternoon, even around the bay and along the coast, where temperatures are going to top out in the low to mid 60s around the bay. But again, only those mid to upper 50s along the coast. Friday's rain chance is going to hold off until after the sun goes down. Then we dry out for the weekend. More rain on the way next week and hopefully even some more rain icons once we add some more days to the forecast later next week. I'll have another update coming up at 11 o'clock. 
All right, Paul, we'll see you then. Thanks. Well, here's a look at your top headlines. Tonight, the FBI and Homeland Security are on high alert for possible attacks on Capitol Hill. The agencies say the threats stem from the QAnon conspiracy theory group, which claims tomorrow President Trump will return to office. The House of Representatives has already canceled tomorrow's session. And tonight, the White House says it is considering a military response to a rocket attack that hit a base in Iraq where American and coalition troops are stationed. At least 10 rockets slammed into the base. A U.S. contractor died of a heart attack while sheltering, but no American troops were killed. No one is claiming responsibility yet, but it's the first attack since the U.S. struck Iran-backed targets in Syria last week. Approximately 10 rockets were fired from points of origin east of the base. We're uh, identifying who's responsible and we'll make judgments from that point. New details tonight in that deadly crash out of Southern California. 13 people were killed yesterday after a semi truck slammed into their packed SUV in Imperial County. Border Patrol says the victims are among over 40 people who entered the U.S. through an opening in the border wall. And the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department issuing a search warrant for the black box inside the SUV from Tiger Woods' crash. The box should be able to tell deputies how fast the golfer was driving at the time. A new report from USA Today Sports says Woods told deputies he didn't remember crashing or even driving. And Ken, just last week, the L.A. Sheriff announced that they were not considering any charges against Woods for the crash. Elizabeth, thank you for that. Coming up next, why a small airport in the East Bay could start servicing planes as big as 737s. I knew what I was getting into, but the plan wasn't to bring 737s in. You know, just because it has a male and female designation doesn't mean that you can't walk to, you know, a, a, a male toy and vice versa. A new state bill getting some mixed reviews tonight. What it would do to the kids' sections at stores like Target. And then later, what had Warriors players going wild a little while ago while they were practicing before tip-off? In the East Bay, some neighbors are fighting a plan to start flying some big planes in and out of their little airport. The airport commission approved a charter jet service to move its headquarters from the Oakland airport to the Livermore Municipal Airport. Now, the plan includes a new terminal, new office buildings, and aircraft storage area, but the biggest change would be the size of the aircraft coming in and out of that facility, including Boeing 737s. We live really close. Um, noise is a big concern. I knew what I was getting into, but the plan wasn't to bring 737s in. We hear the planes often, even smaller planes, make some noise, but 737s offer a different noise point. Uh, the airport commission says that the move will bring in some much-needed revenue. The city council still has to approve that plan. A live look at the state capitol. Bay Area lawmakers want to make it illegal for stores to separate children's items by gender. It would apply to stores with 500 or more employees. Stores like Target would be required to stop separating kids' clothing and toys or face a fine. Bay Area Assembly member Evan Lowe introduced the bill. Let's ensure that we remove the type of stigma the type of bullying that we see, especially in today's day and age. You have the opportunity to walk to wherever you want to. Um, you know, just because it has a male and female designation doesn't mean that you can't walk to, you know, a, a, a male toy and vice versa. I think it's a wonderful idea to smoosh um, girl boy stuff together. Coming up next, could he be the newest Splash Brother? This crazy shot that sent the Warriors into a frenzy earlier. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. That was a Warrior trainer who sunk that half court shot uh, while the Dubs were doing their shoot around in Portland. There's the shot again. Watch it. Boom. All net. This guy's name is Long Lamb, and he could be 
the newest unofficial Splash Brother. What do you think? Yeah, he made it look so easy, just like, boop. That's how it's done. No big deal. See ya.